Hi everyone, I am Ray He Li. I'm a PhD student from the Electrochemical Science and Engineering Group led by Professor Gregory Offer in Imperial College London. Today I'm going to talk about solar consumption, which is related to SER layer growth in lithium batteries. Here is my content. First, let's look at the big picture, what I'm doing. I'm modeling the degradation of lithium batteries because it is one of the bottlenecks for the further development of batteries. This figure here shows the complicated degradation mechanisms summarized by one of our group's review paper. Our group has also published a paper which includes four of these degradation mechanisms. The ultimate goal is to capture as many mechanisms and as comprehensive as possible to fully understand and able to predict battery degradation or let's say battery lifetime. Among these mechanisms, the growth of solid electrolyte interface, i.e. SCI layer growth, is the dominating mechanism. So let's have a look at this dominating mechanism. This figure here shows the process of SCI formation. It contains multiple components. Among these, there were two compounds which were investigated a lot. The corresponding reaction is shown here. Uh, if we have a closer look at these two reactions and think about how we can describe them in a model, we can come to this four aspect. Uh, in most previous works, the first and the third have been intensively studied, but the second and the fourth one have been regularly omitted. In my work here, I want to make a step further and include the second aspect here, the consumption of solvent components. To start with, we first notice an important assumption uh, which most previous physics based models have made, uh, is that the porosity is always equal to the electrolyte volume fraction. But, uh, if we uh, do a simple calculations based on the reaction, we can find that the consumed volume of solvent is almost three times larger than the volume of its products, which means that at some point of in the battery lifetime, some pores in the porous electrode will be filled by nothing, i.e. the cell dry out. And experimentally, we have observed this dry out phenomenon in age cells. The most straightforward effect is of this dry out is, as you can see here, part of the electrode will become inaccessible. So we try to dig into the literature and uh, double check whether there are some previous work on this, and it turns out that there are really not too much. We only found three. This is the first one. Uh, it has observed experimentally a sudden capacity drop. To capture this in a model, uh, the authors multiply the electrolyte volume fraction by a step function here. However, it is obscure in how to obtain this important function. In the second word, a dry out ratio is introduced, defined as electrolyte volume over the pore volume inside the jet row. The ratio is again added to these three parameters here uh, to change the specific surface area. Uh, the electrolyte volume fraction and the active material volume fraction. Uh, they capture a positive feedback loop as shown by this dash arrow here. However, they have ignored the fact that the solvent concentration would change, which may induce a uh, negative feedback loop. In the third word, two parameters are proposed. The activity, uh, which is the ratio between the active graphite and total graphite, and the uh, saturation, which is the ratio between the electrolyte volume and the summations of electrolyte and gas volume. Uh, they assumed different relationship between the, these two parameters, and with the relation 3 or 4, they can fit the experimental data on the right-hand side well. Uh, however, they always they also ignore the concentration change of solvent. More importantly, they haven't discussed the effects of extra electrolyte outside the dirt row but inside the cell package. So then comes to my work based on the three previous work. 
Now I will start to talk about my model. I will start from this figure here. Uh, this model assumes the factories contain extra electrolyte outside the gyro but inside the cell package, which we call a electrolyte reservoir, as shown in the blue strip here. On the bottom three figures on the right hand side, we extract the electrolyte inside the pore of the gyro to form this rectangle. I understand this is a bit tricky. The red line here represents the total pore volume inside the gyro, whereas this block with different color represents the electrolyte volume inside the gyro. The main point is they are not always equal, like this middle plot in the button. The electrolyte volume is less than the pore volume, so there was blank here, uh, which means dry out. Figure D is the initial stage without solvent consumption, and figure E is the consumption stage. And some of the electrolyte is consumed, but the generated SDI volume is not big enough to fill the gap. And then figure F is the replenishment stage, uh, where this gap is refilled by the electrolyte reservoir. What is no, uh, what is worth noting is that we ignore the hydraulic process because. Uh, this hydraulic process should be much quicker compared to the SELA growth. So this DEF plot are actually happen immediately. Um, that's the main idea of this model. Um, also, similar to others, we define this dry out ratio here, which is the electrolyte volume over pole volume inside the gyro. But apart from that, we also define two ratios to capture the concentration change due to this consumption and replenishment processes. Uh, we will compare our work in four cases, depending on the size of the reservoir. Zero means there were no extra, extra electrolyte at all, and six percent means the volume of the electrolyte reservoir is six percent of the electrolyte volume in the general low at fresh cells. Uh, this applies similar to nine percent case and in a non-dry case we just disable our solvent consumption model. So these are the key equations of a model. Uh, the first part is the classical DFM model which has been widely used in modern batteries. The second one is the mature uh, SEI model. The first two models has been implemented in an open source battery modeling platform called Pipa. The last part is my solvent consumption model proposed here, which mainly describes how electrolyte volume is being consumed and how that affects this dry out ratio and the concentration of both lithium ion and EC. To make my model more efficient and based on the assumptions that the solvent consumption is a slow process compared to the charge and discharge process, we write our model outside the code of Python, um, and instead of solving the differential equation, we implement this model by updating three parameters at certain cycles. This enables the model to be just one notebook. I provide a link here which allow anyone interested to reproduce all my results here. And this is my cycling condition. I adapt to a well parameterized cell LGN50 and carry on the following cycling protocol. Next, I will show you what that this new solvent consumption model has. Here, I plug uh, related figures describing electrolyte dry out. We have three cases here depending on how big the electrolyte reservoir is. Um, then the initial panel, the first panel of is the electrolyte volume inside the cell uh, and outside in, inside the gyro, which have shown just showing that they are being reduced. Uh, when the red lines hit the green one, it just means that the cell starts to dry out. Whereas for the 9% more electrolyte, dry out doesn't happen within about uh, 1,200 cycles. Another interesting thing is that we observe in a model that the EC concentration is reducing because it is being consumed and it can reduce by up to 80% which would then affect significantly the SEI current density. Now I will introduce the effects of zone consumption on the degradation behavior of batteries which is the key slide of my talk here. 
specifically we focus on the capacity retention, the loss of lithium inventory, which is called LLI, loss of active material, uh, i.e. LAN, and finally uh, lump resistance here. Uh, we study four cases here. In the first three cases, we enable our solvent consumption model with different initial size of electrode reservoir as introduced before. And in four cases, we disable our solvent consumption. Uh, so first of all, in figure A, we can see a pretty interesting result that the cells with zero initial electrolyte and the one without solvent consumption model started with from the same capacity but they experience different degradation speed and uh, finally they coincide with each other at about uh, 1100 cycles. The cells with zero more electrolyte degradate quicker in the beginning and then slow down, whereas the cells without solvent consumption model keeps the same degradation speed. This is because the two cells have different aging mechanisms. For the cells with the zero electrolyte, it will dry out from the beginning of life and therefore have lots of active material as seen from figure C. But because the solvent is being consumed and the solvent concentration is decreasing, the SCI layer growth will be slower. Therefore, it, have, it has less LLI due to SCI. Uh, but for the cells without solvent consumption indicated as purple line here. It doesn't have LAN at all because it keep but it keeps but it keeps the constant solvent concentration and it will have more SCI layer growth. And the cells with 9% more SCI layer uh, and the cells with 9% more electrolyte maintain the highest capacity and the LAN of these cells is always zero, indicating that the cells didn't dry out during the whole duration of our cycle. The cells with 6% 6 more electrolyte initially coincide with the cells with 9% more electrolyte, but it deviates at its drying out point here. So in summary, our solvent consumption model can uh, quantitatively describe how the initial amount of electrolyte can affect the battery retentions of cells during aging. Now let's look a bit more inside the cells. These are snapshots of the porosity lithium concentration in electrolyte and electrolyte potential at the end of charge and discharge. Uh, what I want to highlight this is that as cell age, the porosity will reduce and the lithium concentration in the electrolyte will be dramatically uh, increased at the end of discharge, uh, which will likely to exceed the solubility limits of LIP of 6. To capture this, we will need to have the mechanisms of salt precipitation, which is another rabbit hole and I am not going to deep into this. Uh, another effect or risk of this high concentration is that the electrolyte potential can go more crazy as the cell age. This equation here is the over potentials for lithium plating. Our model doesn't have lithium plating for now, but we can still have a bit discussions on it by just looking at the electrolyte potential. Uh, so if we know that when this value of lithium plating over potential goes to negative, uh, there will be lithium plating. However, at H cells, some part of the electrolyte potential has go beyond zero, which will reduce the value on the left-hand side of the equ this equation, which means the risk of lithium plating increased. Final bit of results of the is the electrolyte property. So basically, we know that most commercial electrolyte is designed in such a way that uh, the best performance can only be attained at one mole, which is um, a thousand mole per cubic meter. And if you get higher concentration, the conductivity and diffusivity will be worse. But then you can see this flat region here. This is because we realize that most electrolyte properties measured in literature is fit with polynomial form, 
uh, for example, for our uh, electrolyte here, uh, it's only valid within the range of within the range they measure, which is normally up to two molar or three molar. But the model at each stage can normally exceed this range, and then you get crazy values of diffusivity and conductivity. Um, so we, if we reckon that when soil start to precipitate, when exceeding the soil limit, uh, limit the diffusivity or conductivity at soil will be constant. And that's why we use this constant extrapolation here. Uh, and this is to validate my updating method, as you can see here. Uh, it's pretty this method of updating the parameters rather than solving differential equations is pretty effective. Uh, even if you update every 26 cycles, it already gives very nice and consistent results as you update every one cycle. Uh, so I'll draw the finally to give a summary of my talk. The extra electrolyte inside the cell is not just there to keep the cell wet. The amount of sol solvent or electrolyte is very important and it will affect how long your battery can last. But then if you have too much extra electrolyte, you will lose your energy density. Uh, so if, if there is, is a technique which allows you to inject some electrolyte into the cells after a period of reusage, it may be an easy way to prolong the battery life. Uh, if you don't consider this solvent consumption model, you will underestimate lots of fat material but overestimate lots of lithium inventory, which may be a bad news when you have more complicated aging mechanisms stepping in. Finally, we notice in our model two possible competing effects that may relate to lithium plating, uh, which we are currently working on. Uh, finally, I want to express my deepest gratitude to my group members, especially my supervisors, Greg, Monica, and Simon. Thank you very much.